Do you ever look at your toast and think about it? No? Well, no, me neither, but I have thought about the numbers that are on the toaster. You know, next to the dial, go from 1 to 6 or whatever your numbers are. For me, they're 1 to 6. I always wonder, what do they mean? What are they? Why are they there? Do they mean something? I got this idea a while back, but I never actually tested it until yesterday. So do the numbers stand for minutes or any set amount of time? Does it mean temperature? Or does it mean something else entirely? Well, that's what I set to find out in this video. Using a stopwatch on my phone and an infrared thermometer, I went to seek out what the numbers on the toaster really mean. But before we get into the experiment itself, we, I need to explain a few things about toasters. Now, I know toasters are generally not that interesting, but it might be good to know how they work before we go in and test them a bunch. So how does a toaster work? Well, a toaster... So how does a toaster work? Well, you put your bread in, obviously, and then you push down, right? But what does pushing down do? Well, it pushes in these two metal clamps and it just clamps in the bread. Now, outside of those metal clamps, there are these metal wires. And since metal is a good conductor of heat, they can heat up to very high temperatures. And while your toast is being toasted, the wires heat up and cool themselves off until the toast is done and it pops up. This isn't really a complicated system, but it doesn't have to be because it does its job just fine. All right, let's get into the experiment. Now, keep in mind that my toaster is probably not the same as yours. So the numbers I find and the results I find may not be the exact same thing for you as they do for me. But let's be real, it doesn't really matter what the numbers mean in the end, but I'm curious, so let's find out. Welcome to my kitchen. So let's start off with slice number one, I'll go get it. This is slice one, let's give it a taste test. You know, it's not bad. To be 100% honest though, it doesn't really taste like toast. It's got none of that crunch, it's still squishy. So it's almost still like bread, it's just a little bit more crusty. Although it didn't really taste bad per se, so five out of 10. Bread number two, let's see how this one tastes. A little bit hard to get into that one, which is good, that's what it's supposed to be like. Honestly, this thing tastes the exact same as number one. I mean, it's a little bit crustier on the inside, but it tastes the same. It's a little bit better though, it's a cut of 10. Bread number three. Okay, we're starting to get a little more crunch now. All right, not bad. It's not bad, it's not great by any means, it's not bad. Although it would be a little bit better if I actually put any sort of flavoring on these, but we're tasting the bread, not the flavoring. A little more crunch, starting to actually look a little more brown as you can see. So I'd say this is this is toast. This is actually like decent toast. Seven out of 10. Number four, which is actually what I use if I ever make toast, I go to setting four on this toaster. Regardless, let's give it a try. A lot more chewy, as you might be able to tell. Honestly, three and four taste basically the exact same, kind of like one and two. I think I might've even liked three a little more. No, it's about the same. We'll also give this one a 7 out of 10. I'm not looking forward to this. Bread number 5. Well, it's definitely crunchier and a little less chewy, which is a bad thing. You know, despite it looking so burnt, it doesn't taste nearly as bad as I thought. That being said, it doesn't taste good. But some people like it like this. I'm just not one of those. 4 out of 10. And finally, bread number 6. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I, I can't even push down on this thing. This thing is cooked through. Let's give it a try. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Oh, that is bad. That is, I mean, I don't know what I expected, but that is so bad. It's way too uh, done. Let's just say that now. I mean, obviously it was burnt. The toast was all black, so. Yeah, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Two out of ten. All right, now that we're done with the very painful taste test, let's actually get to the results that you're waiting for. AKA, what do the numbers actually mean? Before this experiment, I had no idea what to do with all the toast. Now, I know what I'm gonna do with it. Throw it away. Yeah. Number six still has a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> so let's answer the whole question of this video. What do the numbers on the toaster mean? Well, first I started off by getting a stopwatch and an infrared thermometer like I explained earlier in the video and recording both of those things. While the toast was toasting, I used the infrared thermometer to scan the inside of the toaster where the wires were because that would give me the most accurate temperature description. And for my test, for every single piece of toast, the temperature ranged from 160 degrees to about 315 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it actually probably went way above 315 degrees Fahrenheit, but the thermometer I was using couldn't actually record anything above 315. It just said 
high on the screen. So I'd love to tell you how high the temperatures actually got, but I don't actually know how high they went. So in other words, the temperature is not the thing that's changing between the different numbers on the dial. So if the temperature is the same, then what could possibly be different that would make the toast taste and look so different? Well, if the answer isn't already obvious by now, it's the amount of time they were in. So if you want a short answer, the numbers on the toaster is the amount of time that the toast stays down in the toaster. Now, if you want the long answer and a full explanation, keep watching. For setting number one, the toast stayed in the toaster for one minute and 23 seconds. For number two, the toast stayed in for two minutes. Number three was 224. Number four was three minutes. Number five was 350. And number six, our highest setting, the toast stayed in for four minutes and 28 seconds. So it seems like every single number on the toaster added around 30 seconds to the how long the toast was in. Oh, and as a side note, I did the math, and on average, the amount of time the toast was in the toaster went up on average about 37 seconds, just in case you were wondering a more exact time. And as you may have guessed from the numbers I just said, the reason for such a big difference between how toast number four looked and toast number five looked was because there that was the biggest jump. Toast number four was only in there for three minutes versus toast five, which was in there for three minutes and 50 seconds. And that almost one minute difference, well, it makes a pretty big difference. To conclude this video, I don't really know what I expected. Of course the dials meant time and not temperature. The temperature, there's no way a $25 toaster is going to have varying temperatures for your toast. And besides, putting it in longer is a much easier way to cook it than to change the temperature. Just like if you're cooking something in the oven, generally the temperatures that you cook something in the oven at stay around, you know, above 300, but the amount of time you put it in is usually the difference. So now we know what the numbers on the toaster mean. Hopefully this video was enjoyable to you guys. I know I had fun doing this experiment except for the taste test, but I hope you learned something new today. Also, a quick note, thank you guys for 1,000 subscribers. It is a milestone we've been trying to hit for over two years now, and it's a really big deal, and we're really thankful that you guys came through and got us there. A special is coming out on that soon. But that's pretty much all I have to say. If you liked the video, consider subscribing. And other than that, yeah, I'm Calvin from Sierra Inventions, and I'll see you in the next video.